Seth Bonoff from Dietrich High School, graduate in 2019. I am a meteorologist major at the University of Illinois right now. I have one more semester to go after this one. Got three weeks left in this semester, so graduate in May of 2023, hoping to get a bachelor's degree in meteorology. Seth, you are currently a meteorologist at WCIA 3 in Champaign. How did you manage to conquer that job? So it started with an internship over the summer. So I was just talking to my advisor and she knew I wanted to do broadcast stuff. And so I was just talking to her about, hey, how easy would it be to get an internship up at the station? And she said, you know, they've done that several times before. So I reached out to Kevin Lighty. He got back to me. I visited up there with some of the other interns in the news department and we kind of got the ball rolling there. And Kevin said I'd be working with Jack Irfan for two days a week up there. And so I just came up, started, you know, just recording in their studio, kind of learning the, uh, the bits of the job there under Jack. And then after a while, Jack found out that he got an offer from somewhere and he decided to take that. So they knew they were going down to two people on the team. So they knew that Jack usually does a really good job with his interns. So they took a chance on me. And so far, I hope I'm, uh, I'm making them proud of their decision. I'm, I think everything's going good so far. But yeah, that's how I ended up getting the job. What exactly got you interested in weather? So I, I heard this is a common theme because I think even Jack and Jacob both said it. But it's when you're really scared of the weather as a kid, it makes you pay more attention to it. And when you're paying more attention to it, you want to try to find out, all right, you know, what, what has to happen for, you know, severe weather to happen. Because that way I know I can tell when something's coming and I can brace myself for it and, you know, run away in fear when it actually comes. So, yeah, it sounds like a lot of meteorologists grow up either fascinated by it or terrified of it. And therefore, that makes them pay more attention to it. And in my case, I was terrified of it, so I watched it more. I'd say the part that I enjoy most is the fact that it's not the same thing over and over again. Sure, you can see similar setups between, you know, storms or winter weather, but no one thing is the exact same thing. And I think that's what makes the job exciting is that you don't really know for sure what's going to happen. And therefore, it takes an element of, you know, always adjusting, always learning something. So that way, you know, the next time something similar happens, this is what happened last time, but this one's different. I got to find out why kind of thing. So it's always something different to have to keep track of. So I think the most important part about forecast and weather for the viewers is just the fact that they can know the kind of thing to walk it into because everybody, you know, either by just taking a glance at their phone on whatever weather app they have, everyone kind of likes to know the weather they have in a given day. But I think the most important about forecasting it is just that everyone kind of knows what the day ahead looks like, especially if there's something coming, because we like to, of course, you know, forecast the next couple of days ahead, but we also like to include the next time something big is going to happen, whether it's tomorrow or whether it's seven days out, because you have five days in a row of nice sunny weather, but you expect some kind of storm coming up, you know, a week or 10 days from now. That's the kind of thing you want to let people know about, because if some big winter storm is going to happen, but it's going to be nice up until then, you want to get the word out that, hey, in 10 days, you'll probably want to get stuff ready because something is coming, even though right now it looks okay. When did you realize weather was something that you were interested in doing? Yeah, so I've known from a pretty early age that this is something I wanted to at least try and do. I, I know, I don't know what grade necessarily, but I know for sure probably around second or third grade, I'd always been saying, yeah, I want to be a weatherman on TV. And I think that stemmed from being afraid of storms because being seven or eight years old, you know, you anything in the world can scare you, anything big. And when you have storms rolling through, that's the kind of thing that you get fascinated by. So I'd say since about early elementary school that's when I kind of knew that was the thing I wanted to at least try and do and that continued on throughout grade school and it kind of never went away until I got to an adult and realized this is still definitely something I want to do. What was it like being introduced on air by former weatherman Jack Griffin and were you nervous at all? I was I was deathly terrified because that internship was the first bit of experience I'd had on any kind of you know camera and I, I usually don't like listening to myself I of course do to figure out what I can learn and improve on but that first time I was up there on TV because I had seen Jack do it a million times there over the summer but when I was finally up there I was just looking at the camera you know big wide eyes and I still do talk fast but I remember when I was being introduced I was talking really fast I'm sure nobody caught what I was saying so yeah I was I was certainly nervous but it was a good way to kind of get my name out there and I'm I'm glad Jack did it so that way he kind of tied in him leaving to someone else coming in too so it wasn't you know about either one of us just kind of you know passing of the torch kind of deal but yes i was i was deathly terrified well here we are graced with our presence with our intern seth bonhoff and he's actually going to be our new weekend meteorologist which is going to be pretty awesome wow welcome to the team yeah, thank, thank you seth. thank you so he's a local boy but he's got a lot more to say yeah so um i'm from diedrich it's in the southeastern corner of Effingham county i've been around the area my whole life i went to community college at lakeland there in mattoon been at u of i here the last year entering my senior year this year so i know the area pretty well and it's been it's been a blast since i got here you know early in june i was kind of you know really nervous to do all this stuff jack really got me settled down jacob's helped me out with quite a bit too and i i really feel like i'm in a good 
good position to help contribute to, obviously, an already very successful team here at WCIA. Now, has this been something that you've had your eye on for a while? Yes, absolutely. I have been wanting to go into weather since I was a kid. My dad exposed me to it. I used to be terrified of storms, and I think <laughs> that, that got me to pay attention to it more, and so I just fell in love with it over time, and I've known for a long time this is definitely what I want to do. Being a local kid, what's it mean to you to bring weather reports back to your area? Yeah, that means everything. I mean, that's one of the big reasons I went after the job, too, is because I wanted to be a proud representative of the great area I'm from. There's a lot of great people, and I just want to be a good representative of that, and it means a lot because being at that local station, you know, it'd be it'd be a little different if I was somewhere else in the country giving weather because, yes, it is still something I enjoy, but I think it really amplifies it being able to report the weather to the people that you were from because it just helps out so much, and it's good to know that there's people watching you. There's people that have watched me from when I was a kid up until now, so it's good having knowing that that support that I've had since I was a kid is still there. What type of support have you received from your family friends? I mean, all kinds of support. I know my mom and dad have virtually watched every single show I've been on, even if they have to, you know, go to church during the six o'clock, they record it, come back and watch it. So I, I know they're always watching. It's great to have that kind of support. And even though I'm not home all that often anymore, since I have school and work up there, I get all kinds of texts from mom or dad saying, hey, I saw so-and-so in town today, and they said, you know, you're doing a great job, and uh, please tell them that I said, you know, he's doing a great job. So I know that there's plenty of support around here, and that keeps me going, too, because, like I said, if I was somewhere else, you know, I'd still enjoy doing the job, but it's so much better knowing here at home that there's those people from home that are still rooting for my success and that are continuing to watch me. Toyota's most accurate forecast with forecaster Seth Bonoff. Right. So it, it helps to know what's coming, you know, in advance. So that way, if I know there's something coming in a few days, I can kind of work around my schedule. I can talk to Kevin, Jacob and Adam and kind of get stuff figured out like, hey, I have, you know, exams this week and I know there's something coming, you know, Sunday night kind of thing. So just communicating with them so that way they know, hey, I'm pretty busy, but I know something's coming up. So it's it is a little tough balancing the, the school schedule and the work schedule, especially when you toss in, you know, some weather that you make sure you have to cover. But it, so far, I think I've got the pattern figured out to an extent, you know, the, some nights are busier than others, some weeks are busier than others, but I think overall just being able to communicate with the team helps so that way they know, even if they have to work a little extra, they don't mind because they know school comes first. My favorite time of the year is fall just because I like the nice fall colors. I like the temperatures. I don't like it too hot. I don't like it too cold. It's nice and 50 and 60 with a little bit of a breeze. I just think that's perfect weather. Same thing with spring. You know, I don't mind spring either because it's the same thing just in reverse. But as far as predicting the weather, my favorite season probably definitely has to be spring because that's when you get your most interesting weather. That's when you get your severe storms. That's when your tornadoes ramp up. So that's definitely the season you got to pay the most attention to. I don't mind winter. I haven't done a whole lot as far as winter weather reports yet just because, you know, first winter coming up here. But I think winter, even for the experts, you know, the people that have done it the longest, I think they agree that winter is a little harder to predict than others. So even though spring, you know, pretty hard to predict with severe weather too, I think it's just a little more, a little more enjoyable and a, a little less stress free. I'm not going to say it's totally stress free. Do you face any tough obstacles while being on the air during or after? So I think it, the toughest obstacle before is just making sure that if something happens right before you go on, like we've had situations before where we know some severe weather is coming. Nothing's happening yet leading up to your show. So you're getting ready to tell people, you know, this time you got to watch out for this time you got to watch out for. But two minutes before you go on air, you know, if you get two or three severe thunderstorm warnings that pop up, all of a sudden the, the forecast that you had ready to go, it's like, all right, instead of telling people what might happen, I got to start telling people what's happening right now kind of thing. So I'd say that when things happen right before your broadcast, that would be the toughest thing before. And then after, I, I think the toughest part is when your shows are done for the evening, but you know that stuff is coming later that night, you do kind of have to stick around and keep an eye on things and adjust your forecast as needed. So even though you don't have any more shows left, you got to be ready at a moment's notice to go live on the streaming or jump back on air too. So even after your shows are over, your job isn't necessarily finished if there's more coming later on. So there is an added thing there where you do have to stick around there even after your shows are done. Working with Marley, Jennifer, Kevin, Jacob, and everyone, what's it like? So, I mean based on my shift, I have to fill in, you know, morning, afternoon, night. So I've worked with pretty much anybody, any on-air talent there so far. And the common theme across all of them is that they're all extremely friendly. They're all willing to help, especially those evening people who have been around, you know, the longest. They give me tips. They help me out there anytime I can. But really, no matter what time of the day I'm working, morning, afternoon, night, weekend, anything, everyone's very helpful there. Everyone's, you know, we're all kind of in the same boat kind of thing. So we all want to see each other succeed. And it's, it, no matter who I'm working with, I know that's going to be, 
both you know a successful time and a good time because they they do all like have a laugh in the background too there have been a few funny moments and a lot of that is directed by like you know whatever kind of content they're putting on because sometimes before the final seven day forecast team they like to put a little thing at the end you know some sort of thing that makes you laugh so usually that's the kind of stuff that we're talking about but every now and then you'll have something funny happen live on camera i think i had one morning show one time so it was by myself it was a weekend morning show so i was just kind of doing the weather in my own little corner and i had the, the camera on gibson city and i was watching there's four-way stop there on that camera and two cars both thought they had the right away, so they're both moving each other. It looks like they're about to get an accident. I'm like, no, 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 live on air. So that, you know, that kind of stuff that happens, usually with the live cameras too, is when I get the most laughs. But if I ever have anything kind of predetermined too, like any kind of corny joke on there, I, I, I do hear a few chuckles in the background. What have you learned being on the air? So I've learned several things as far as weather and of course, just the TV business. I'll go with the weather part first. The part I've learned most about is that, yes, I paid a lot of attention to it before, but I wasn't always, you know, writing forecasts for a certain area. So I've learned, you know, the trends of, you know, what models are usually right, you know, what to usually expect when I see a certain situation pop up. So I'd say paying even closer attention to the weather now, as far as the specifics has helped me with actually being able to predict the weather. As far as the TV business, you know, I, I've always wanted to be the, the on-air person for, you know, a, a TV station. I did watch a lot of Weather Channel growing up, so there wasn't a whole lot of news tied in with that. So it's interesting now to see how news and weather, especially from a local perspective, tie in. And it's also just different to see, you know, I, I thought going in and, you know, I'd be in front of a green screen the whole time and have to look off the distance. I have actual monitors in my studio kind of thing. So there's a lot of different parts to the job that I didn't really know a whole lot before. And a lot of people don't know before until they get in there and get in the studio. And I didn't even know what the studio looked like kind of thing. So there's, there's been a lot of different kind of TV business things I didn't know about before I started there. I'd say my biggest influence is still my parents. I mean, both of them, my dad was always kind of, you know, a weather buff too. So when I was young, he was the kind of person that, you know, when I was terrified of the storms, he, you know, encouraged me to look and see what's going to happen kind of thing. So, you know, what's coming up and same thing with my mom, you know, even though she wasn't quite as, you know, attentive to the weather, she was still the kind of person that knew I was interested in something and continued even when I was young, be like, you know, even though your mind could change when you get older kind of thing, you know, keep thinking about this because you, you clearly enjoy it and, you know, you clearly have some sort of talent for it anyway. You told me before you used to be terrified of storms. Now forecasting them, has that changed? Um, I, I can safely say I'm not terrified of storms anymore. It's a kind of thing where, you know, I don't, of course, I don't want anything to happen, but it is neat when something, you know, when bigger storms happen so that way I can kind of get to the details of it, describe what's going on, keep people safe, of course. But yeah, definitely not terrified of them anymore. Now, something's coming right at me. You know, I, I still have, you know, a normal human fear. It's like, okay, got to make sure I'm safe and got to make sure I can stay away from this for the most part kind of thing. So, I, you know, there is still a little bit of an element, you know, a little bit of a scare factor. But as far as, you know, looking out the window and seeing it storm, and I, it, I don't lose sleep over it anymore, let's say that. So my plan after I graduate is, you know, hopefully the station wants to keep me around kind of thing and I can continue on with my uh, weekend job and continue doing what I'm already doing right now. You know, started with the internship, you know, got the weekend gig during school and hopefully I've proven enough by now to where they'll be able to keep me on there and I can keep doing what I'm doing now here for hopefully several years to come. What is something about you that not a lot of people know? Oh, goodness. Um, let's think here. Um, I would say the fact that I not necessarily naturally smart it's kind of something i have to work for because nobody's born necessarily with like a natural sense of knowing you know what the weather is going to be kind of thing it's something you got to work for and even though some people can learn things naturally a little quicker than others i think of myself as a bit of a slow learner so even though it, it i mean i do know what i'm talking about while i'm up there it, it took a while to get me to that point because you know it does take me a while to figure things out i'm a little bit of a slow learner i don't always catch on things immediately but i do work pretty hard to get that stuff done so even though it i know what i'm doing up there it, it took a lot of took a lot of hard work up there to do it i'm sure you have watched the weather channel a lot and okay. watched jim cantori who's yep. one of the best um what do you take away from what he's done and kind of learning the ropes of how to how to kind of evolve into what he's kind of been right so he's obviously a, a genius of what he's done he's seen everything he's thrown himself into the middle of everything too i don't think he really is concerned about his safety it's more about getting the story out there but i think a big thing i've learned from him aside from you know all the scientific things and all the you know weather related stuff he's taught me is that there is an entertainment side of the business you know weather is very serious and you know people need to know what's going on 
people love a weather report, but they also love when there's something to chuckle about or something entertaining going on in there too. And I think he is a pretty good entertainer and that's seen the fact that he's, you know, obviously been out in hurricanes before, but he'll put himself in those chambers holding a rope where it's like, you know, blowing category four, category five winds on him just to show people, you know, the kind of stress it puts on your body. So he adds a really good entertainment part to the gig. And I think that's something that I try to try to do when I'm out there too. So if you weren't being involved in weather, what would you have done instead? Right, yeah, that's a that's a question I thought about quite a bit too because there were there were times when I was doing weather and you know I'm doing this tough math. It's like, man, this is kicking my butt. I better have a backup plan in case I can't get through this math. But you know, I, I do like the broadcast. You know, in, uh, I do like broadcasting in general. And I think if I weren't doing weather, I would love to do some sort of sports commentary kind of thing. I did a little bit of that at Lakeland College. It was a class up there. I just did it for one semester. But you know, I do the basketball games, baseball games, softball games, and that was that was fun because it felt like I was in my element, still being able to use my voice and broadcast. But I've always loved sports too, and you know, I keep track of pretty much all the four major league sports. I like to keep in the know of all kinds of college sports, especially in Illinois, of course, in high school. And I think being able to do that would have been similar to what I'm doing now, especially if I were to do it at a local level if I were able to you know announce you know, local community colleges or high schools it'd be the same kind of thing you know doing the weather local to broadcast to the people that I know same kind of thing with the sports too with being able to do that I mean man I could be here for an hour if I had to give the list of how many people I had to thank but obviously you know my parents for continuing to encourage me at you know a young age to do something because you know kids minds change a lot as far as you know what do you want to be when you grow up you know it's something different every day sometimes but I think them encouraging me to continue with my you know my interest in weather that was always really helpful and same with my elementary teachers too because they were in the same position not that my you know middle school or high school teachers didn't but at that point when you're more of an adult you kind of do have your mindset on what you're going to do so it does help to have their encouragement but it's those elementary teachers when you're seven or eight years old when your mind does change you're like you know i want to be a weatherman it's like they're like oh wow that's really cool you know definitely do that stick to that you know don't change your mind kind of thing so i i do want to thank them too for continuing to encourage me to do something that i'm sure not a ton of kids say all that often and then just you know support from all of my friends they'd known i wanted to be in weather for a long time and they're always you know same kind of way they're very supportive of it they think it's very fascinating and anytime i you know someone asks you know like when i was in high school it's like you know what are you going to do when you're in college and i say weather they're always like oh wow i don't hear that all the time so it is nice to kind of hear that it's like you know this is something interesting this is something that people don't always hear about so it's kind of it that always helped me uh, continue on with it too Thank you for what you do for, for the area, and, and we wish you the best of luck. I appreciate it, and I appreciate the interview, too. You know, always good to, you know, I do it because I want to represent, you know, where I'm from, and you do a good job of that, too, getting all the local athletes and other people of significance around here, too. So it's always a good time to be part of this, and I'm glad that you gave me this interview because, like I said, I love representing the area I'm from.